Yeah. But, uh, We're live, by the way. Rack. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Ladies well, and gentlemen, I, Nelson I Hodges. I'll get you back. No, you will not. You are not. You're okay. Bill Church. I'm no, Nelson I said Hodges. <laughs> this is Nelson. Uh, Over okay. here is Nelson. All right. We are with the, the man. Wait, let me see. Where Where's my... If, there we go. Uh, Nelson. Um, and, and for the first time and, ever, we're oh, streaming Bill. to Twitch. Whatever that is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an old thing, guy. Man. Okay, I am too. It. Yeah, That's, they're not going to be interested in us. But I mean, I've been told uh, we got to stream to everywhere that we should. Yeah, they should be. Absolutely, they should be. They should you be. Know. Ooh, Twitch notification, dude. Look it. Well, there you go. That's, that's, a, that's the best I've ever looked. Manage oh, your, your channel directly from your phone. Manage so cool, dude. Look at this technology, man. I know. Isn't that look at amazing? this technology. And now I have my girl back here who's in heat flagging my puppy. Oh. <laughs> well, Never. there you go. Well, I guess the youngsters will like that, won't they? I don't know where, where they at. I don't know if you can see them here at all. There's my cup. But yeah, they're whatever. So I need to come and fit. Uh, so because we're on Twitch, I did not share this to my Facebook profile. I want to share it to multiple platforms. And so I'm going to go to my Facebook profile, or no, I'm going to go to Facebook, and I'm going to hit the share button. I'm going to go to my Bow Wow Bill page. And you guys, if you're watching this right now, make sure to hit share. I'm going to catch up with Nelson, and we're going to bring on a special guest as well. And we're going to talk about what Nelson does, where he's at uh, with all this craziness, this, this uh, pandemic pandemonium that's going on, and uh, what's he been up to, uh, how many... He's got some new dogs. I know that. Just like I got some new dogs. And we've, it's been a while since we chatted, huh? Uh, yes, it has. I'm not sure how long because I don't care. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my, uh, you know, my uh, sense of Builder. humor, my dad, my dad stuff comes out. So. Yeah, of course it does. All right. So I'm ah, still working on growling. Yes, they are. She's growling at the door, I think, while she's still flagging this puppy, man. Oh, she's getting ready. So when dog when dogs are ready, their progesterone level gets to a point, and it's got to be, I think, above 10. I think it's got to be super high. I don't even know what numbers it's got to be at, but I just bred some dogs, man. Have yeah. you ever bred dogs, like purposely bred them? Yourself? No, I have not. No. Okay. No, I've been involved with others, but no, I haven't myself personally. What a cool thing, man. Yeah, it's a neat experience. Been around, uh, you know, other uh, breeders have good friends as breeders, and uh, it's a pretty amazing process. But uh, you know, I focus on the development of them rather than, you know, the creation. So. Right. And even even as trainers that, that we do focus on that, like I, I was saying that we usually get these dogs around two months of age. Right, if we're lucky. If we're lucky, yeah, and they've already missed the, the major development connection point. Um, you know, I created a um, a whole course on puppy brain and body development of when they are in sync, when they are not, and what the what happens during those specific weeks and months, and why dogs behave the way they do. Um, from a literally from a cellular standpoint mm. on up. So uh, had that class uh, a couple of months ago here in uh, Texas and uh, very successful class. I was very happy with it. I had uh, I had to limit it to 20 people because of you know social distancing and the space we had available, etc. But um, I've, it was a one-day class and uh, very happy with the results. There was a lot of detail I could not get into. We did get into some detail, but there was a lot that I could not get into because of the limited amount of time. You know, eight hours just isn't enough to cover it. So what we've done is in my, uh, at my institute, course two is... Um, is the next one after the RBVM, the Relationship-Based Behavior Modification course. 
and uh, people go through that. That's a nine day. And then course three is actually an eight day, which includes three days of, it used to be vet medical taught by my ER vet. Um, and uh, we've, we've changed that now to three day puppy development uh, class, which goes over the brain, the body, the behaviors, uh, how you, how you develop uh, enriched, brains versus deprived brains and uh and what that means in the long term both both the short term and the long term so that's three days the first three days and then the next five days is the human psychology uh communication etc which also goes into dogs as well but mainly focused on that and that's not taught by dr christine kohler and uh uh you know brilliant uh, a brilliant, crazy psychologist. Now <laughs> she's awesome. We're gonna. I'm gonna have her. I've had her on before. If you guys check out yeah. check out the interviews I've done with Christine. But I'm definitely. We've been chatting it up, and we're definitely gonna come on. What you drinking there, Nelson? Iced tea. That's the hard stuff, right there. Iced tea. Do you, do you sweet or unsweetened? Unsweet. Oh my goodness, man! You're hardcore. Get yep. over here. Come here. <laughs> the dogs. I got a food. I'm in the same room with the food bin. Ah. Uh, and so, guess what? They're over there licking. Well, gee, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> down you lay down and you lay down over here too <laughs> i'm talking to nelson you yeah. can't have unruly dogs in the room while i'm talking to nelson. <laughs> but that's their they know man they're just like oh uh. let, me, let me show <laughs> show him so did what i found is so interesting and i think that it's such a, a unique thing because i mean learning is one aspect but learning um from direct experience too and having yes. these puppies yeah. and and seeing and knowing yeah. that look man like breeding is not for the faint of heart like um no it's not and and understanding the development of it not not just not just through the gestation period pre estrus period all of that you really have to understand and that that's one of the things that i do go through uh is even the the development of the sire and dam prior to Okay. And that's very important. Uh, it's not just OFAs and all the other things. It's the nutrition. It's the relationship. It's the it's the temperaments, and you know you you really the problems that we have are because we have we have people breeding dogs, and I'm not talking about good breeders. We have for specifically just for money. And so the, without would, taking so many considerations, like you're anything, about, frankly, in, right. in, into account. And that's why we end at, up with the dogs the that dog. we have. Yeah. They look at the dog and they're like, that's a dog that um, mm -hmm. I want to I reproduce. And, um, and even with, even with, um, you know, as I was um, uh, breeding these dogs, I learned that, you know, there's, there's, and, and that's crazy thing is Nelson, is that you can see, the skittishness of these puppies since they were itty bitty, man. And like, it's not something oh, yeah. they, these dogs are born this way. Yes. You know, well, genetics has a lot to do with it. Obviously you, yeah. you have two memories. You have genetic memory, which is long term. It teaches you what you are basically and, and how you behave on a general basis. In other words, I have my specific tools. I have four legs. I have teeth. You know, I have two ears, I've got a tail, I get, I learned to use all of that, and my genetics tell me how to do that. Yes. And then you have learned memory, and the learned memory is where we can affect um, behaviors and temperaments. And you can change behaviors over a fairly short amount of time, relatively short, not, not two days, although sometimes it takes eight seconds in some cases. Um, yeah, and, and some of this behavior needs it, to be met head on too, man. Yeah, and sometimes and so, it takes two years. Depends on how severe the dog is. And fear. sometimes it takes but, as long as it takes. But once you change behaviors on a general basis, as we teach, uh, you literally you get what you focus on. That's how the brain learns, and that's how the brain works. So when you focus on uh, the right things, the structure, the the ability to understand and process in certain ways, to understand that something isn't a threat and that you don't have anything to say about it. You don't need to, meaning the dog, sometimes the human. Uh, that um, especially in this day and age. Yes, very much so. <laughs> um, 
that um, you can, over a very long term, years of time, change that temperament. But that's a learned behavior, not a genetic thing. So when we talk about breeding, uh, you know, the good breeders, and there are many out there, there really are. Absolutely. They don't do huge volumes is the problem. Right. So the huge volumes are the puppy mill types, the backyard breeders, those that we categorize in certain ways, which is frankly unfair because there's a lot of different types of categories than just those two or three mm -hmm. segments. But then there are some very fine breeders who are really trying to do the best and trying to, uh, to improve the breed. Those are the people that should be doing this. You know, we look at... I know we're kind of going off uh, just oh, wherever wherever we go. Yeah. Um, but you look at right now we have 91, 92 million dogs in the United States alone. Okay. Uh, Thirty years ago we had around sixty million. So all of the spay and neutering hasn't helped one bit. It's mm -hmm. about demand. It has nothing to do with uh, all of the, uh, frankly, government uh, ed edict and. Uh, and I understand the rescue group people, they're trying to curtail because they're the ones, frankly, on the front line of trying to, to you know, help these dogs. As Heather Beck says, standing under a waterfall. Pretty much, yeah, or a fire hose coming at them. Right. Um, and so, you know, those, those people, they, you have to have a policy in place. And I understand their policy. Uh, I, I'm... I'm vehement against early spay and neuter myself, even though there are um, there are reasons for it. I understand there are human reasons, not dog reasons, and uh, that's that's where I differ. Uh, is the the medical side? Um, I mean the endocrine so. system. That I mean the, the the. I mean just imagine me having my testicles removed when I was six years old versus fifty years old, right? Well, and yeah. Would I would I look different? Would I sound different? Would I behave differently? And I, I my guess to, is to say yes. I would have a yes. hard time going through that testosterone, um, you know, uh, uh, surge when I'm going through puberty, right? Right. And, right. You know, we got a bunch of people joining us. Tosh is in New Zealand. Says good morning. Sherwood says, "Hey Nelson, it's so good seeing you. Hope things are going well." Thank you for always taking time to share your wealth of knowledge with others. Hello, Cher. Key says, hello from Ottawa, Canada. A? I put the A in there just because. <laughs> no, it's supposed to, it's, it's sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Everything in Canada is sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we love to make fun of you guys down here. <laughs> I have learned so much from Nelson. Really love his way of observation and common sense thinking. And that's absolutely, I think a lot of this is observing without reaction and looking, you know, and, and we're going to bring on a gentleman that has been through um, one of uh, Nelson and Larry uh, do, did this um, uh this class for combat veterans or veterans that was, uh, and he, he had a pretty good breakthrough and he's on that process of learning as well. We're going to bring him on here later and talk with him about what he's learned and, and how he's applying it to his life. And, and, uh, look at, she says, sorry, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Europe is on board too. We got people from across the pond. Oh, hello, Rahel. Excellent. Good. Uh, hello from two hours South of me. You know, you're not two hours South of, uh, of Nelson, you're up north, but um, <laughs> and you need to come up here, Mark, and come see me. Mark needs to, and and I'm gonna have Mark on one of these live streams as well. This is your formal invitation, Mark, to join me on one of these and talk about your process of learning. I love talking to new trainers, and um, and you know, it's just that that path of mastery is a path of vulnerability, right? And you kind of have to delve yes. into past that, that you, you realize that you have to say one of the most powerful phrases in the human language that we can say to ourselves and those three words i was wrong or i don't know or i don't words, know <laughs> yeah man that's the other one too and yeah. um you know as 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 we bring more and more people into the fold with using this technology that we have and sharing the knowledge i mean we're all in this to benefit dogs at the end of the day yes uh -oh. Nice, nice way to go, Nels. Yeah, well, I just wanted to <laughs> slam you down a little bit. <laughs> There's from Australia, so we got New Zealand, Australia. We got Europe in the house. We got Washington State. Mark is down. He says that he's down for 
for for coming on and he also says i don't know and that's yeah that's what's cool about the new trainers and and that's what we need more of because yeah as people that have been in this industry if we can loan our scars if we can say hey <laughs> benefit from my mistakes and right. we've taken these problems and we've, yeah. we've essentially made them into gold. Right. So, so yeah, having, having taught many subjects over many decades, frankly, um, I think I've taught martial arts for a little over 40 years. I've been involved in it for a little over 50 years now and in martial arts. I get to have students for 20 or 30 years. Mm. They they stay with me for that long. And so I get to see not just physical and mental, but character development as well. And that's the way I wish people would, uh, would seek out um, not just information, but, um, but seek to develop their own personal character because, you know, the, the precepts that I've lived my life with has served me well in anything that I've done. And I've done a lot of things, obviously. Um, and that, that's, uh, uh Oh, you're showing some of my secret squirrel stuff. Anyway, um, <laughs> where are you at? I'm trying to see where, where, uh, which one's you. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm in there. Uh, are you really <laughs> sure? So who is he? You guys. Uh, yeah. Find Waldo. Where's Waldo? Uh, Where are you? are you? Did I already go over? This is you right here. I see you. So, there he is. Oh, uh, I should have just saw your picture. But yeah, here he is, folks. Well, what is what is this? Where is this at? Uh, that's actually we had an annual training camp in a uh, kind of Federal Reserve area in the middle of the Ozark Mountains in Arkansas. Uh, again, annually, and. Uh, that's a Taihoru, which Taiho Jitsu, uh, uh, which is a combat system. It's not a sport. It's a real system. It is what has developed from essentially what the samurai were. The Taihoru, Taiho Jitsu is basically modern samurai. Uh, so, easy, easy so we could, we could care less about uh, sport and point fighting and all that other stuff. Submissions. It's about uh, actual hard combat and uh, being effective at that. So, and whether that means um, you know punching, kicking, throws, pressure points, uh, joint locks, weapon systems, neutralizations of weapon systems, all of those things used to teach a lot of law enforcement, federal agencies, uh, friendly foreign governments, stuff like that. A lot of military. I, I taught a lot of military units. Um, and, um, you know, that's, that's uh, the, the four precepts I live with are discipline, honor, respect, and humility. And if those guide you and not, you can't leave out one, not one, or that falls apart. Mm. You have to understand the meaning behind each one of those and, and, and take your ego out of everything. And that way you are constantly a, a receptacle as well as it, you're the example. And if people would understand that they are the example for everything they think, stand for, and behave, I think we'd have a lot less problems in behavior with humans and dogs, frankly. So. Well, and to add to that, you know, the discipline, honor, respect, humility, I think that, you know, we learn in like religion that there's a trinity and a lot of times yeah. we learn that it's a father, son, Holy Spirit. But I think that the truth trinity is thoughts, emotions and actions, like in alignment, so to speak, you know, well, and that could be an I, esoteric, you know? I, it can be, but it also is, is on a physical basis as well. It's, I talk about, especially in course two a lot. You have to have uh, alignment is a good word for it. I, I call it something else, but but it all has to comport how you behave, what you say, the emotionlessness of what you do and how you do it with regard to humans and dogs. Uh, you know, I joke, although not really, about only having one emotion um, be okay. because emotions cloud cloud your brain frankly 
Well, they, people try to are, think they are with filters. their emotions. They try yeah. to think with their emotions. Emotions know, are all personal. And that logic. means you're only you're only within yourself. And you know, the, I worked for many many years, decades, trying to trying to help dogs out of their own mind and into reality. And humans are a hundred times worse about being inside their own minds and not in reality. Of, of, of nature of what exists and, and then they get a dog and they do the same thing to it right because yes. of how they and, and that includes all the trainers that i've trained frankly right. well and that's where i was telling martin and i talk to people all the time there's this guy named Barry, gary vaynerchuk or gary v he's a motivational speaker Pretty and of him. Yeah. yeah yeah and he's he's good i like him he, he started in the wine business i guess his folks got started there and he was like <laughs> i he was like one day he's talking he's like i fucking hate dogs and mm -hmm. it was in front of a huge auditorium and I tuned in because I was like, what, <laughs> you know, and he's, right. like, and he's like, I know what you're all saying to me. Some of you are like, Ooh, now I don't like this guy, but let, hear me out. He's like, some people, they put too much work into these animals before they've even done the necessary work on themselves. Well, they use and the animal as the surrogate for themselves. Emotional dumping ground, you know? And yeah, and, it's more than that, obviously, but, but yeah. yes, it is. It's, it's, and, and, Frankly, those animals, dogs in specific, uh, do not have what we call learned human emotions. Past a certain point in age, dogs don't develop that because their brains don't have that part. They don't need that uh, evolutionarily. Right. So after a, 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 the equivalent of a two and a half year old child, all the emotions that you have up to that point, obviously, with different intent with a dog, with a predator, but all those emotions, that's all you get. The other things that you get beyond that with humans, such as development of jealousies and all these other, uh, um, well, I won't go into that, but all these other emotions, that's right. uh, they don't exist in dogs, but that's what humans project on them. And that's why Absolutely. we have so much problem with the dogs, because once the dogs see how weak the humans are, they take over it's simple well and that's it man and i see how why people do it and it's anthropomorphication and just like nelson says i agree 100 percent. that's what i tell people it's the biggest mistake that people make is by anthropomorphizing these animals and like nelson says we they don't have the part of the brain like we could take a, a scan of our body or we can just cut it in half <laughs> and see that our yeah. brain like we have a human beings we have an outer buffer of our brain that that neocortex a prefrontal cortex yeah. or the new cortex mm -hmm. right that makes us different that that, that separates us in our thought processes <clears throat> From these animals and by putting our perceptions on these animals um, is actually a disservice to the animal because they're not capable of right. that process right and so instead of put overlaying yeah. our perceptions we have to kind of by proxy see the world through the dog's eyes and become that dog and that's why i love what you do with relationship based based <laughs> modification um, is yeah. is you know we become the dog it, you know, essentially you know the the interesting thing yeah well if you can here's the thing is uh, up, virtu virtually uh, at least every other night i'll have you know on average i'll have some some dog trainer somewhere on earth want to talk to me call and talk for an hour or so um and this has been tonight. going on for years and years and years that that has problems with some client dog that they want to you know bounce things off of me or they're just stumped or or they have problems with their own dogs frankly and uh you know it it all boils down to thinking like not just a dog but that particular dog mm. if you take your human it, it just stop thinking like a human and start thinking like a dog and that's it. you have to understand what how their brain works and that's what i really really focus on in course two course four and course three is all about the human psychology part of that 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 part of the equation when you dump on that animal what you are you're not seeing that animal and so and when, what, a, what when, a big selfish what a selfish act because then you're essentially trying to turn that animal into yourself Instead yes, of and that's yeah. Instead of bringing 
instead of bringing nature into your home. I mean, we don't, we don't, we are so separated from nature anymore as a species, Mm. um, at least in the quote unquote civilized industrialized world. Mm. Uh, We've become, we've become specialized ants as part of the colony. And, you know, we don't have to raise our own food, kill it, and, you know, know how to take care of ourselves. We, we, we're Push basically that off on Maslow's hierarchy is is yes. is yes. filled in. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. so so we've become specialized ants, which you know, people <laughs> when, when, when they when they have uh, you know when they begin finding out all of the things that I've done in my life and I still do, they they're all aghast as to you know how do you do that? And my answer is. How do you not? Um, so, you know, it's it, it, you have to pursue life, or it goes by. So anyway, I don't want to get into all this philosophical stuff. Frankly, I well, mean it's great and it's part of what we cover, I but think it's, it's a minor from, part. It, right, it but is. it stems from it. You know, well, it's, it's part of the relationship. It. You know, you it's know, important to understand it. I created relationship-based training, relationship-based behavior modification as a moniker. It's what I've always done, mm-hmm. but as a as a you know copyrighted uh, system name, whatever you want to call it. Um, and frankly, five years ago, no one was talking about relationship in dog training. Mm-hmm. And when they were. And many still are when they say relationship, they mean the dog to them, and it should not be. It's the other way around. It's you to the dog. Mm-hmm. Dogs don't have parts of the brain to process things the way we do, and there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean the dog is ignorant. The man means the dog's specializations and evolution over the past 60 million years has been such that it is a genius for what it is to survive in this environment. Mm -hmm. And so they've adapted, you know, each, each epic, uh, those animals have adapted and evolved to what they needed to be. Uh, These guys are frankly brilliant. I, as, uh, as we study more and more, and as we do research more and more about the brain, not just human brain, but as the canine brain, uh, we're discovering, even new types of neurons that wrap the the brain that connect. There's different branches within. There's different uh, you know neuroplasticities that we've discovered. Yes. Uh, there's new brain cells that get the brain that developed itself. You know, there's it, a book that it was just, does. Yeah, and and parts of the brain and how the brain works between do- and this is some some of what we go over, especially in course two and course four at the institute is is what does that physical and electronic computer inside the head of that that dog how does it work what does it work what parts of the brain um, hear human speech and respond to it versus Mm -hmm. what parts of the brain uh, human speech is is related to in the human brain and it's a massive difference absolutely massive difference Sound has different meanings to, to dogs yes. than it does to humans. And we can map that. We literally, I have maps of that, of the parts of the brain. And the, the human speech is a tiny little dot mm-hmm. in the mass of a dog brain. And it's a massive area in the human brain. Just, well, knowing, now- just knowing that, understanding how the brain works literally and figuratively in that animal gives you to gives you uh, better pathways and better results and that's that's what that's what I try to teach my role in life at this point is to teach that's that's what I do that's and right. and you know that's I, I was I was asked for more 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 from from all the trainers who've been through a few of my initial courses and so that's why I created the Institute um, was to provide really a graduate level study of braining, brain behavior, uh, canines, humans, all of it uh, together 
so that so that we could make uh, much more effective uh, not just trainers but people with their dogs um, and understanding and and being able to deeply um, appreciate and have a great relationship a deeper relationship than you've ever had before people go who go through course two which is the nine day um, you know, they come out of that nine days where they actually have had have that dog twenty four seven for approximately eight straight days, twenty four hour periods. Right. Um, I think that's pretty cool. That they have a deeper relationship with that dog than they've ever had with any of their own dogs they've had their whole lives. Isn't that interesting? And it's the way that we approach it. It's the it's what they learn from it. It's taking their, it's putting them in a situation where they are learning with the dog. You know, so it, it a couple things too about the dog brain is that in human body the brain ratio to body the brain to body ratio what they call it is one to forty. Yes. In dogs, it's one to one twenty five. Right. Yeah. And so just by yeah. that, and that's across all breeds. So that's kind of a, mm -hmm. you know, some are more, some are, are less. Right. right. And right. I just posted up a link to the book, the brain that changes itself. And it talks about plasticity mm -hmm. and all these different cases that have basically broken all the rules from, from this guy having a stroke mm -hmm. and uh, rebuilding wow. his brain to come back to work almost normal. And then this other one that I, I wanted to talk about was Dr. Burns. He's uh, founded a, a project called the Dog Project, and they've trained dogs to enter a fMRI, um, which is right. a f functional yeah, magnetic resonance imaging, right? Right. I've actually spoken with him about the project that they did. Right. And they're, I mean, so, so far they've got 880 dogs that they've scanned mm -hmm. um, and they don't uh, sedate them or restrain them or anything. So that's right. not affecting that thought process. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it's, let me see if I can pull up here. Um, yes, I can. So let me pull this up and show you, Nelson. Is this one okay, it? You're going to make on. me put my eyeballs on. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh -oh. <laughs> Gosh. And there drop your... Go. Here, let me see this guy here, Chrome tab. Okay, so awake fMRI. Um, and I can read it to you too, Nelson, if you can't see it with the Yeah, the little, that's too small. <laughs> little thing. So awake fMRI reveals how canine brains process novel words, right? What Nelson was just talking about. Um, neuroimaging shows dogs differently process pseudo words and trained words, yes. right? Yeah. And so uh, we want to get data from the dogs themselves, not just the owner, because the dogs, as we know as professional, are going to tell you a totally different story sometimes Very much so. <laughs> than the yeah. owner will. Right. Um, and so here it is, Always. man. It's There's a number of essays, how dogs view the world. Brain scans tell us. Check yeah. it out, you guys. Um, what it's like to be a dog. Um, canine Confidential. So here's um, here's the other thing about studies, and this is where this is where I've tried to, you know, over the past couple of decades, at least past twenty years or so, I've tried to look at it from how to understand the dog from the dog's standpoint, not from the human standpoint. When we do studies, we have a purpose and intent behind that's it. That's right. And Specific. science science is always affected by in outcome by what our input is in the first place, how we view the universe. Mm. We view it as humans in our understanding. So we've already stuck ourselves in a box. Mm. So if you, if you can imagine what a predatory animal is like, fortunately I can, I've been a predator and I've been prey in some pretty bad situations over my, my lifetime. Uh, in various third world countries and war zones. And so uh, having that experience has allowed me to, um, to translate how I, how I understand what's going through their mind with their capabilities and their tools. Um, I heard somebody talking about uh, muzzling a dog, et cetera, et cetera. I've, I've only muzzled nine or asked clients to muzzle nine of the dogs out of, I don't know, eight to 12,000 dogs I've worked with over the years. Um, 
And the reason is, it's to, to a dog, that's the business end of things. That's everything. That's its tools. So it'd be like us being handcuffed with our, time, with our hands behind the back. Mm -hmm. That's how you have to look at it. To you, no big deal to muzzle. You know, okay, well, okay, you can't eat, but you can still breathe. No big deal. So you put a muzzle over your face. That's no big deal as long or as you can eat. Even a straight jacket, I would think, like a straight exactly. jacket. You know, not, so, not even so, more confined. So the way we use our tools, which is our, our hands, you know, our digits and things like that, that's how dogs use their mouth in somewhat of a relationship there. Um, so if you restrain your arms, you're not going to trust. You're not going to be able to handle things in the same way. So there's an extreme stress on dogs when you put them in muzzles. Now, obviously, for for their own safety, many times, and I, that's the way I describe it. I've asked I've asked my clients to put uh, a muzzle on their dog only nine times, and probably within the first thirty minutes, the muzzle's off anyway, and we're, right. we're having a good time after that. Right. But these are severe, dangerous dogs that I don't want them to get injured by me having to injure them to protect me. I don't mm -hmm. care if I get injured, but I don't want the dog injured. So, yeah. and that's why the muzzle comes out. And it's much like, uh, you know, well, I don't even want to go on the human equation. But well, hold that. on, let me, let me need to catch up with these comments here. Nothing like uh, trying to work with Huskies every day to build character. <laughs> I call Huskies the eccentric dog. What martial arts do you teach? That's what Mark wants to know. Well, martial, uh, again, it's Taiho Ru, which is Taiho Jitsu, uh, Japanese police force system, which was developed in 1920 or so from uh, three different what you would call jujitsu is actually samurai because it's weapon systems, it's everything. That was there a pretty is, brutal there, time in Japanese no, history, too. Yeah, very much so. So it, it's, it is not. Like I said, it's not sport, and it's certainly not a commercial system. You have to seek it out heavily to even get to it. So, and it's no nonsense, and it's real world applications with just about anything coming at you. Yes, everything. Yes, we treat our dogs and, and like we treat our inner child. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, and well, and and that's a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> um. You know, if your inner child morally and and um, morally, ethically, and, and intellectually has never grown, that's a bad thing. Hmm. George uh, Cockrell, what's up, George? Hey, George, how are you? Treat doing, your dog friend? like a human; they will treat you like a dog. Yeah, yeah, there they're going to treat you like a dog because they're a dog, and they, well, they're going to treat us like two-legged monkey dogs chattering monkey <laughs> dogs that you call it right yeah um, idiot yeah. human primates yes not your emotional dumping ground words to live by absolutely yep. working with a dog is a partnership not a friendship yeah it, it can become a friendship but it's certainly a partnership and yep. and all you have to do <laughs> uh, is become a predator mindset and understand what is from their viewpoint predator prey or pack member those are your three choices yeah. that's it or an inanimate object and that those are your no four bearing, choices has no bearing yeah. upon your decisions Oops. or, or your you just went to insect mode again did i really there we go okay there we go yeah something's going on i don't know if it's the <laughs> signal here did you guys um, talk about working with an extremely dominant working dog in bite sports and obedience? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I can. What's, <laughs> what's, I mean, what's the issue? Yeah, first I mean, off is to determine if this dog is really dominant or what's going on with this dog. And, and um, yeah, you know, what do you think about that? Well, okay. So, so dominance is, um, Dominance is a word that humans use that um, that that animal, whether it's human, mouse, I don't care what it is. Dominance is a word that we use to describe a behavior trait, which is a controlling entity. Now, why is that that animal controlling? What is it trying to control? Why did it learn that? 
Why did it learn it was effective at that versus effective at something else? Mm. Part of it is the genetics aspect, part of it is learned. And the learned behaviors, you know, and I just worked with a German Shepherd uh, litter of eight. As a matter of fact, I've got one of the dogs out of that. Uh, I hadn't intended to, but uh, they asked You've got me. You've your feet right now. Yeah, they asked me to uh, to work with him because he was n tied for number one out of the, out of a litter of eight um, GSDs. These guys, uh, three of them, I, I did I did a full month uh, of evaluations on these on these dogs from five and a half weeks to nine and a half weeks old. And I went over quite a few times and worked with them for hours at a time. I studied each one of the puppies. I studied the mother. I worked with them. I had the people do uh, constantly changing enrichment uh, activities and environment and textures and, you know, all of these different things. They did a fantastic job with this litter. And, um, awesome. And, um, from that, three of the dogs uh, were top-notch service or working dog level uh, cool. intelligence, temperament, independence, all of those things. And you I mean, not I, all eight. <laughs> no. <laughs> and there was a fourth one, actually, a fourth one that working with a you know a qualified, really good trainer for working or service dogs would have been very excellent at that as well. Mm. Uh, two of the dogs, two of the three were working dog uh, capable. The other was service dog, uh, meaning uh, it would it would be able to take whatever the human gave it essentially uh, for you know physical needs and stuff like that, emotions and and keep keep on going. It was it was a fantastic dog. She was actually the one I was thinking of getting when I was first working with them. Uh, the other two males, the big, the two big guys, uh, they're working dog capable. And, um, uh, so the one, the one guy that they were concerned about going to the right place, they wanted me to work with him for a few months to develop him into a working dog rather than, um, uh, rather than just chance it to whoever comes along and, you know, uh, adopts the dog and so i agreed to work with him and and um i really hadn't intended to keep him but uh about a month in i looked over at my wife and said he's ours <laughs> so uh, that's bosch and uh, i've kind of posted on my facebook sites the development of that litter and bosch along the way i discovered doing that there's a lot of people out there that really don't know a lot about the development of the brain and the body and how the congruency and the incongruencies and the timings and all of that, which is why I developed that puppy course, uh, that puppy development course. And I, it's, I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. I think it gets the point across. So, but, well, uh, and I think yeah. that's interesting. And I, just like what we were but, talking about earlier, dominance, how... sorry, going back, oh, there's, yeah, there's dominance. one of my, so, so, uh, funny, I posted something about my my wife and I discovered uh, Blacklist uh, show on uh, TV a couple of months ago, and we watched a few things and a few of those incidents. And uh, I posted that uh, Raymond Reddington, the character there, is a lot like somebody I know very well. Me. <laughs> he what has show is that? Blacklist. Blacklist. Uh, yeah. Other than other than him being a, a total sociopath and and uh, <laughs> and murdering uh, not too nice a guy, uh, he's a lot like me in the way he behaves and, and acts. So uh, you're, you're not out there murdering not nice people on your day off. Not anymore. This is Nelson being dominated. Yeah, that's yeah. That's that's not your boy, but that's your girl. But that's that's right my there. girl. That's Toffee. That's, that's how Nelson handles domination, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so dominance, dominance, in the way we think of it. Yes, there are certainly there are certainly traits that that are genetic, but there's also learned behaviors, and those learned behaviors are such that that dog, in experimentation with, there's that peanut. <laughs> hey, little guy. 
That dog experimentation with what? Uh, that dog w- with its siblings. And this is where I, you know, if I could influence breeders at all, is to keep that, keep those siblings together and with their mother for at least 10 weeks. Just keep 13, talking, I'm thir- work out. 13 weeks would be ideal because. Yes in that nine to 13 week period is when they truly begin learning those limitations and what it means to be too hurtful, too too dominant, uh, too problematic, too emotional, to all these things. The mother helps and the siblings start helping. When, when they're biting an ear and there's no empathy whatsoever for the other dog that they're biting the ear, and this dog screaming doesn't mean anything to them until they get it on them too. And then they go, oh, that sound means that hurts. Okay, well, I won't do that. Yeah, uh, sometimes I think it's opposite. It it's it's yes. arousal for them because it's exactly. great. Exactly, yeah. Right. And so, so that, that early developmental period is critical uh, with with breeding, if you can keep your your pups together for well, as siblings to learn from each other to develop and healthy competition, uh, we would have a lot fewer problematic yeah, dogs. Yeah, a lot of them are popping them out at eight weeks uh, religiously, and I hear dogs coming out six, six weeks, and we, six yeah. even five weeks. Well, and, and you can see them at seven weeks. That's when syndromes. we we start to te- yeah. temperament test them. And I tell you, Nelson, when I did, I have this big space here and then I did my puppy classes in. And when I brought those puppies out there with the mom first out of the whelping box mm-hmm. in that big room, I mean, yeah. the bu- puppies were like, whoa. And do you know what mom did? Trampled them. Yeah. yeah. And then ran across the other side of the room and trampled them again. It's like, let me show <laughs> you what we do in this room, right. you know? And she, yes. and, and it was crazy because I trust my dogs, right? And I observe what sure. is, but I, but I, I mean, there was a couple of times I was like, easy, Sequoia, easy. Like, but it was cool to see the process of those pups toughening mm-hmm. up too. And I think that that's a yeah. huge part of, of what we, because first, we're nurturers. First of all, who, who, who are they going to trust more than any other entity on earth? Their mother. And if their mother's doing this, they go, well, I guess I can handle this. And so they learn to trust these things. It's, it's, you know, we, a dog is always, a mother is always going to be able to communicate and teach those pups much better, hundred times better than any human. All you're going to do is prevent, present opportunities. And if you need to limit an action, you can, but don't step in the way of between the mother and the pups. And that's right. where, if you can, if you can develop them much longer. So getting back to the original question, here's one of my, uh, uh, yeah, my 45 minute tirades on, on some tangent. Sorry about that. We got uh, somebody. We got somebody just showed up, as you can tell. So yeah, my training gift to you guys. So. so so the extremely dominant ones, they have learned or have been, they have been nurtured to become controlling. They, they're the ones that make the decisions, in other words, for what is good for them, best for them, and survivable. And that's really what it is. It is all about survival. Every question you ever ask, uh, every, <laughs> frankly, every trainer that's ever, that has ever asked any question of me has been, you go back to the base. How does this animal see how it survives best in that environment? That's what it's all about. And so it's learned, it's experimented, it's been successful, it fine tunes, and that's how those those particular dogs, especially um, with g- genetic predisposition, obviously for working dogs, uh, you can you can temper that, frankly, pretty easily, or you can make an out of control animal. And uh, sometimes, just like humans are wired differently, sometimes those dogs are wired differently. And, and the only answer that they have, that, that's one of the things that we do in course two, is we give, we give these animals um, who have issues, they are definitely have some issues, some of them even biting issues, uh, and we give them different answers within that eight to nine day period 
So we've given them a different answer consistently that they can then take and use and start fine tuning it rather than the answer they had before, which is biting, controlling, you know, being a jerk, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. and, and they learn that they had a, first of all, when you put a dog in the best situation it's ever had in its life and you give it, uh, you help it to see this is better, pro-social behavior. It's, it, it, I go back to sociality and the, and the four precepts of sociality. And pro-social behavior is what we're trying to teach, where you're trying to do anything that I do or that entity does is for the benefit of all of us. When you go to social behavior, that's about me and me alone. I want interaction my way. Mm. That's what we have is we have a bunch of social dogs and social humans when we should have pro-social. So I take antisocial, asocial, social animals, and I make them, I try to show them. I can't make anybody do it. Well, I can physically. <laughs> Pain's a great motivator. But, uh, <laughs> Dude, I hate uh, how you're laughing at that so readily. <laughs> you're just like, I can <laughs> <laughs> hundreds of thousands of hours of putting people in pain. Sorry, I love it. <laughs> you know, it's better to give than receive. That's right. Um, so, That's the bottom line, too. And it's uh, it's a season for giving, too. Uh, it <laughs> so is, you. very much so. Merry, Merry Christmas uh, to you politically all. Politically, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, and... and um, you know, that's, that's what, so, so I don't know if I answered the question specifically, but dominance, it boils down to control dominance is, and, and dominance antisocial is behavior, antisocial well, behavior, not necessarily control. antisocial. It is because, uh, because a dominant animal can be pro-social. That's right. Okay. I do that. I give guidance, say, I, I agree or I disagree with that. That is still right. a dominant situation. If I agree all the time, even tacitly, I'm I'm still in a dominant position. When I give that, you are not permanently in a dominant position. You can't live. No one can live under total dominance. Period. Oh, man. You know. And and if you oh, have man. more than if you need more than a split second oh, a day man. to agree or disagree with someone or something human to dog, dog to dog, otherwise, or dog to human, frankly, which is a lot of what happens. Mm -hmm. um, if you need more than a split second a day, you're doing something wrong. If you need more dominance than that, then uh, you, you have a lot of uh, missing pieces. I'll put it that way. Yeah, I mean, so I, I hope that answered uh, a little bit of that. I didn't really, I can't read the questions here because it's on my phone well, it's, about it's, that. It's, side. Yeah, I think you did, you did just fine. And if, okay. if you, um, and then I'm, I'm sending out a couple of these, um, we're going to invite a couple of people back onto the show too. We're going to invite JD for a little bit here in just a little bit. And then, um, okay. and then we're going to also, here we got hit. I sent JD the, the link there but i also um want to get through some more of these comments here so um i posted up if you guys see oh, the, um, the link to the book that uh the brain that changes itself that's the the link there there's the twitch comment hey everybody from twitch that we're 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 cool we're <laughs> what wherever you are and wherever, wherever you going. are i know we're not a video game but well, whatever. So Karen wants to know, what is your typical day like with dogs? How do you communicate with them? Oh, Lord, there's the there's the thousand dollar question right there. How do you communicate with dogs? Uh, I communicate with them the way they do. Um, that is. First of all, when you are around dogs, just when, just like when you're around humans, um, if you have any uh, empathetic aspect to you, in other words, you're not a sociopath, uh, you are having a conversation with that animal or those entities 100% of the time. You, the position that you take in a room or outside, which direction you face, your intent while you're doing it. So it's body position, movement, posture, intent, which is a big one, 
distance, speed, all of those things are how they communicate in their language. It's very sophisticated, it is very broad and very deep. And that's how I behave, um, that's how I communicate to them. My, my day, uh, it depends on where I am, what I'm doing, obviously. Uh, but, the, but I am consistent, and that's where you have to be consistent and, and comport your emotions, your behaviors, your actions, your directives and direction uh, to assist not to dominate <laughs> um, uh, are all to build trust because communication, first of all, to communicate properly, you have to have clarity. And with a different species, you have to have contrast. So if you're monkey chattering all the time, there's no contrast between your, your noise, your white noise, and a directive command request, whatever you want to call it, to a dog. All they hear is monkey chatter all the time, and they're supposed to listen to you constantly and discern that one word when you actually are saying something to them. That makes no sense. And so, especially when you're talking about in the, the size of a, a dog brain, you know, I'm trying to get in the center here, okay, and you look at this back point right here in that brain, that's all the dog responds to, to human speech. That's it. So, <clears throat> when humans um, use human verbiage, which is 7% of our language, how we communicate, uh, to a dog, it's less than 1% of any input whatsoever. So the communication is actually how you behave, where you stand, how you stand, how you walk, your stiffness, your speed, your uh, smoothness, your fluidity. Uh, Rigidity. All, all of that. Every bit of it, where your eyes are, the direction of your head, the direction of your chest, how, big your how you are. use your hands, all of those things. Ears. Uh, your breath, literally. The chemicals that come off your sweat, your all of that. That's why emotions are so important to understand how to not send the wrong signal. It all has to align together to make sense to be trustworthy to that dog. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to become trustworthy. Then whatever you ask of them directly, they will do readily. And that's what I try to teach humans. Well, and that's where, you know, I think that's a good segment to JD is JD was a gentleman that um, he, he was. Um, and, and we also have Larry joining us as well. So, hey, Larry. Oh, and and uh, right. Larry, um, hey, he's, Larry. Not, he, he's not on the show. He's on the in the road. I sent him a link. And if he can join okay. us, he absolutely will pop in and say hello. Okay. But I know that you and Larry did a veterans um, you, yeah, uh, training. Combat for, vet. Yeah, combat um, vet workshop. Uh, it was mainly Larry's. They came to see Larry. They didn't come to see me. But I did help some people. And I... I let Larry speak himself out. He kept saying, you know, uh, Nelson, do you have anything out. to add? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, go, Nelson, do you have anything to add or say? And I go, they don't want to hear from me. They want to hear from you, Larry. They're for here, here for you. So I, I talk they don't, all the time other thing, otherwise. <laughs> they don't want to hear from you. It's just that they can't hear you. <laughs> that, that, well, that too. Yeah. No, it was a really good workshop. All right. And, well, let uh, me bring um, – so Two you, days. JD is a, a Rottweiler breeder, and um, he's got big ambitions as a breeder, and uh, he's learned a, a bunch. And so let's let's bring him on board. Are you ready to rock, JD? Give me a thumbs up. Can you hear me? Everything good? Okay. Oh, there he is, ladies hey and gentlemen. What's up, JD? How you doing, buddy? Can you hear me all right? We can. Can you hear him, Nelson? I can hear. All yeah, right, that's better like that. Hey, JD, how are you? Hey, Nelson, how's it going? Peachy, I just let I just opened the door and let my whole pack come in. So they were <laughs> they were howling outside the door, saying, "Let us in." I just let my girl on my lap. This is Sequoia. This is one of my cattle dogs here, and uh, she's always. If you're ever watching any of these live streams, just know that this girl is within four feet of me. <laughs> always, <laughs> she's my she's my my heart dog. So. Um, JD, how did you hear about uh, Nelson and, and Larry and, and uh, um, 
Oh my goodness. Look at who we got here. Larry. Hey guys. Hey Larry. <laughs> Where Hi, you at, buddy? How's it going? You probably Teach won't you. hear me well, so I won't stay on, but I have proof that God wants me to be happy because I was just missing <laughs> my food in Arizona and I stopped in Nashville to get gas. And there's a taco truck here. So I'm eating some tacos. Oh, cool. <laughs> there you go. Larry, you need to do a food channel, dude. Oh, I'd, I'd love to do that. How are y'all doing? Pretty good. We're Excellent. doing awesome. Thank you for joining us, dude. Sure. I'll just sit here and listen. I'm sorry if you don't hear me too well. Oh, it's okay. Actually, and if, if you have any background noise, I'll mute you or whatever. But um, so um, Larry did, Larry, you do these uh, veterans uh, where you put on these classes for veterans, right? Sure. And then you and Larry, you and Nelson got together this last year before COVID, all this craziness happened and had one yourself, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I really enjoyed doing that with Nelson. And, J and JD attended that one and he came and what did you guys, when you first saw JD, <laughs> what's going on with him? What, what were your first initial thoughts and, and tell us what, what, uh, what you saw? He didn't look as bad back then as he does now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going great. COVID. COVID. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Got to get you to the do, do, hey, to the barber you, you, there, buddy. You know, you know what, uh, Bill? You always meet you meet really good people at all these um, seminar yeah. things, and, and I'm not a big fan of the seminar stuff. I'm just not. Uh, the ones that I actually do truly enjoy are the veterans ones. It ju it just has a lot more meaning to me, and and I've met some tremendous people, you know, through doing those, you know, and 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 I. I, you know, it got me out to Nelson's place, and I really enjoyed that whole process. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to even do so. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, I enjoyed having you. It was great. Well, and, and Nelson, so um, JD comes. And JD, how many dogs did you bring? One. Just Mountain. Okay. Awesome dog. Awesome. Thank you. He yeah, is. And, and really, man, that's that's what I was talking to Bill about was – so at that point, when I met you guys, my adolescent dogs were eight months old. And I feel like all the trainers are like, it's kind of funny, right? Because that's when my problems really started. But with Mountain, I didn't have so many dogs. And I was just, I thought I was awesome because I, I and you kind of talked about this in your video last, last week, Larry. It's one of the things that's been weighing on me heavily. Um, but with Mountain, I thought I was, I knew everything because I could make him sit or place for a long time or he'd stay out my side. He'd pick me up out of bed. He would do all these things that I would ask him to do. Um, and then and, and in public, he behaved fine. I mean, but whenever I was in the house, he was having behavioral issues and none of it was really that big of a deal because he was always with me and I could be like, hey, you know, don't do that. And I never yelled at Mountain raising him and all that stuff. And I didn't think I had any problems. I thought I was you know, awesome. I'll be honest. And then uh, whenever his puppies were eight months old, I was raising his puppies and I realized it was, it was 13 puppies. It's good. Yeah, it is. I think that that's worth being mentioned, you know? Yeah. It was a lot of puppies, way too many. I totally know that. I don't even want to say admit that. I know that now, but nonetheless, that's where I was. And I was in this spot where, you know, I had been watching videos on YouTube and all sort of stuff, but none of that was even remotely helping me. And I just got to a point to where I was like, I'm in over my head and I need help. And luckily somebody told me about that seminar and Larry and Nelson let me come. And that was the beginning. I want to say that's the beginning of where I started because for the next few months, I still kept doing the same mistakes. You know, I kept, I, I am completely, Whenever I got Mountain and I started doing this, I quit my bands and became all my obsession that a musician would put into a music, I put into my dogs, right? So I was doing obedience. Like sometimes I would be with them for 16, 17 hours in a day. I mean, just all day long doing obedience. And I was still having issues. And I didn't even know that's why I was having issues. I thought maybe I'm being too stern or maybe I'm doing this wrong, you know? And, uh, and then I got to go to that class and Nelson and Larry were kind enough to help me, even though they both knew I was crazy. Like they, they knew it. <laughs> and 
No, you were uh, passionate. Uh, there you go. Passionate. And I guess crazy people don't know they're crazy. Uh, but anyways, uh, we're you know, all crazy in our own point, way, man. That's that's it. at that point, I, you know, I kind of feel like I started pick and choosing what I wanted to listen to and what I didn't. And I realize now that my problem wasn't that I was too stern or that, you know, I wasn't doing enough obedience or I wasn't walking my dogs or exercising my dogs. I was doing all that and still having these issues. Well, then I did the RBBM course, right, with Nelson, because I really was impressed with Nelson at that seminar. And see Nelson. Yeah, whatever. And I wanted to go back and learn from him. I don't. Uh, and when I did, I started to get the information that I needed. But I still what I, I like had the book knowledge, but not the practical knowledge of being able to apply it. And I was still doing the same stuff. And I would go back to like day one and and. You know, I was even going to the point to where the leash was on all the time and I was doing all that stuff and telling them when the drink tone. But what really never changed during that whole time was a the behavioral issues. They didn't get worse and they didn't change. They didn't get better. And what. About last week. Larry posted a video about how he sees his clients making a lot of the same mistakes, and I felt really guilty because, like I said, they. Well, it's not really important because honestly, that's changed. And in a short amount of time, I went back to the beginning again about four four days ago. And this time I've really been like mountains laying down with me right now, but he's a foot away. My problem was that I was letting mountain up my butt all the time. He was so pushy and such a butthead. And I was like, what's up, little boy? Come on, let's play. And we'd rough house in the house. And in the house, there was no true structure. I realize now that even when like it's up till six months, he did crate training. But after six months, it was like, welcome to the family. And he moved in and he slept wherever he wanted to at night and did all this stuff. There was water in the bedroom and, and just all this stuff. And I, I realize now that I gave my dog too much freedom. There was no contrast. It was nothing but monkey chatter. I'm an extremely emotional musician type person. So these are all the issues. And so really I had to change who I was, if I was ever going to reach my dogs. Right. And that's what, and, that's what it and I, fundamentally go. down to man. And I kind of came to that realization of, look, you have the drive to do this. You just have to do it, you know? <laughs> and so that's what I've been doing. And since I've done that, and this is, this is where it really came in. You guys is that I saw a huge change in my dogs instantly. These problems yeah. that I thought I had, that I thought were huge. And we've talked about this bill and both of you, I've met a lot of dog trainers since then. And now I realize that my problems were not as big mountain has never attacked me or really even growled at me. He doesn't try to, he's always been really friendly with other people. I mean, granted he wants to push his head into them and say, pet me, but <laughs> you're lucky dude. I yeah. Mean, I, and I'm lucky. People don't know Rottweiler or he's a big Rottweiler. He's huge. He's, he's huge. He's like, come he's here. gorgeous. Come here, buddy. Yeah, let's see. Let's come see what it. we're talking about here. Uh, he's, just, everybody in your head. he's just a little pup. He's so big, you know, and he's getting old now. He's getting gray. But um, I think that any, it's important what you said, JD, about how, you know, the dog responds instantly. And that's why did. we can grab leashes as professionals and people can be amazed at us. And sometimes that can be a good thing. And sometimes that can be a bad thing, especially for people that want to take advantage of other people too. I mean, there's people out there, but I mean, the dog is going to respond according to their environment. They live in the moment, you know, I was creating super villains. That's what I always tell people now. Like that's what I was doing because I was doing all these puzzle <laughs> games. I was doing all this obedience. My dogs could open the door, go outside, kill a deer, bring it back. You know, like they, they have been using their brain, but the problem was is that I wasn't, I had no idea about the meat and potatoes, as Larry says, the behavior side of things. I didn't understand it. I was blind to what I didn't know. I was, a lot of stuff I didn't realize were even behavioral issues that Mountain was doing. And, and now that I've changed that and I've said, hey man, you got to give me my space. And for the past, for the first three days of going back to day one last week, I didn't touch him or talk to him at all. It was leash on out of the crate. We're going outside. You go pee. All right, now come over here to the water bowl, drink. All right, now let's go eat. And I did that with every single dog around. The, and my kennel is silent right now, you guys, completely silent. I'm not punishing them. I haven't yelled at my dogs in months because I started using the leashes everywhere 
about four months ago. So I've been doing leash work for a while, but I was still, whenever it was just me and the one dog, I would baby talk. I mean, you are such a good boy, Mountain, or I would rough house with them. And like Larry's video, I was like, dude, you are letting these guys down. My wife could tell, like, <laughs> my husband is really struggling right now. And I, she said, what's going to make this better? I said, Mountain and Sam at Liberty on the floor in my house, uh, a DVD of that. And then put that in a box with some whiskey and send it to Larry. Like that's the only thing that's going to make this better at this point for me, because I feel like I, I was so wrong for so long. And now it's, I'm starting to, I, I don't want to say that I know what I'm doing still. Cause I'm like six months from now, you're going to be like, dude, you, you said you didn't know. And then, so for me, like I just say I'm on the right path now. Like I know I am because their behavior is changing in a positive way. Mountain does not, it's more than just not blowing up at his son and grandson as well. Cause I have a son and grandson. It, it, it's, he doesn't look at him that way. You know, I'm almost to the point at the end of the, this time, I'm going to go 21 days of just really going in there and try to do that. And at the end of that mountain, and Sam are going to hang out. It's happening. It's time. That's a and, goal. And I tell and, people, keep our eye on the big prize, you know, and hold on. If you hold on for one second, JD, I want to get some uh, feedback here from Larry and Nelson as well. So with you guys, um, you see this a lot, do you not? Of people coming in and um, I mean, they think they think they have a good relationship with that animal, but they a lot of times don't know what they don't know, right? Sure. Yeah, but in JD's case, where there's a huge advantage was he was so approachable and looking for the answers. He He wanted to make sure he was doing the best he could. And when you work with someone like that, when you meet someone like that, you know, uh, I had a great conversation with JD a while back about the amount of dogs and everything. He, he just, he, he honestly wants to do what's best. A lot of people say they want to do what's best, but they're not willing to do what's best. And, and, and that's, that's why he's made such tremendous progress, you know? Yeah. Well, we call those ask holes, you know, the ones that ask, but they don't do they or they don't. They're like, no, what about this, this particular thing? And you're like, dude, that is just a symptom of this thing over here. And they're like, no, that's not you're tripping. That's what I had somebody tell me once I was tripping. And I was like, OK, I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm tripping. <laughs> that's great. And Nelson, what about so um, uh, what? Well, yeah, I mean, JD is is on the path, and and that's the way I describe it. Is you know, there there is no end to this. There's no, There's no end finish to study. line, you guys. There's no finish yeah. line. I I just happen to be further down the path than most everybody mm -hmm. else. I can yell back or slap them upside the head and say, "Now you're going off the path." But you have to walk the path yourself. There is no mm -hmm. shortcut. There's certainly a long way around, and that's what most people take. But, but the path, and the path is your own because you have your own experience, your own life, your own emotions, your own behaviors, yeah. and you have to you have to put that together with the knowledge that you're seeking and how you process it to get where you're going, wherever that is. So you know, when, you know, JD is one of these guys that that yeah he wants he wants the answers but he doesn't want the answer that it is you know one from column a one from column b and there's the answer it's he understands it's a much deeper uh, much more complicated situation and that he is a part of the equation i can't tell him how to be i can show him just like i can show somebody the shadow of a four-dimensional object in three dimensions but you can't see the four-dimensional object well and i've noticed too when i've worked with veterans sometimes they've had so many things cut and dry like this is how it is boom 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 and then when i have to tell them look dude you got to intuitively like feel this or connect with that dog and they're like what is that like how do i do that right. and that's not I, I i have a hard time explaining like how you do that i'm just like you gotta you gotta build rapport rapport is power just like with any relationship and that includes number one fundamental is trust and like what you said about the dog trusts you and then trust the situation you put them in and then eventually trust themselves right and that's that's always the order it goes in right and that's the, the fundamental foundation you first. That, my, whole, my whole 
Yeah, my whole What's training, that there? my whole. I'm just agreeing with that. Oh, absolutely, Perfect. you said. Okay. Perfectly said. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my whole my whole training, the way I've been focusing on people lately in course two is, it's a method I call it you first. You are the example to the dog of how you want the dog to be. Period. So if you're the neurotic, change you seek in this world, yeah. you know, just like what they yeah. like Gandhi says. If right? you if you want the dog to get up on that table, you get up there first. And then it's very clear to the dog. Guess what? That's what I want you to do. And then they go, okay, great. So well, you physically, mentally, spiritually, you first. You're the guide, or you're not. Physically, it, spiritually, and mentally. Wow. Thoughts, emotions, actions, too. You know. That's it. Well, and, and anytime that we, we run into a problem that we don't know what we don't know, you're going to find sometimes that you're going to be confronting your own shadow, your own monster within you. And and I was talking to JD yeah. about that, like he's super calm musician. And then he made a decision to move to Texas and get this dog that his wife loved to carry on the bloodline <clears throat> that his, his wife and family bred in Hawaii, I believe. Right, JD? Uh, her, her mom is actually on the mainland, but... Uh, Yes, essentially. And then, but what happened when you got these puppies? What happened to your own behavior at the beginning? What we were talking about? Oh, you, yes, you got 100%. I, right. I found got... <laughs> out, I thought that I was a bass player. And so, like, I was there to make the singer look good, right? Like, that's the job of a bass player <laughs> to make the. I was in a pop rock band, right? And so, my job is to, and whenever the, the, the shows were over, everybody would come up and want the singer's autograph and the guitar player and the drummer and they would ignore me. And I was like, I was always cool with that. And so I said, I don't, I always thought I'm a really calm person. I don't have an ego. I'm a relaxed guy. And then I got the puppies and I realized that is not true. You just have never had your buttons pushed, <laughs> you know? And then, then everything started to be an, a thing because I was in over my head. I mean, honestly, but um, that's a good, good sign, man. When you feel this frustrated, and that's why I do the glass. You know, why I do the glass, and I'm sure that's why Nelson does the the guitars, and I'm sure that that's why Larry. Larry, do you do any art or anything? Do you do? Uh, no, my therapy is being out sitting in a tree for hours Dude, at a time. There you go. Yes. You know, that's it. But we all have something, you know. Mm -hmm. and and that 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 manifests I, and i have to have that do you know what larry paints yeah, that's the only time where <laughs> larry paints <Yeah>. restrooms <laughs> <laughs> i knew that was coming <laughs> it's from all the tacos but jackson pollock <laughs> very accurate <laughs> Well, and that's what I just you know, had six tacos on the side of a road at a gas station. So, dude, I saw you wolf them down, man. That's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> well, the bottom line here is that uh, that we um, we can learn from those that are further down the path than us, right? And don't let your frustrations get the most of you, and know that you are going to be embarrassed by your past self sometimes. And that's okay, right? That's why they say hindsight is twenty twenty. But what's important is the person that you've become d through this journey and your willingness to learn and to change your actions based on what you've learned and, and based on what you see reflected from your dogs, right? You know, it's interesting. Embarrassment, frustration, those sorts of things, those sorts of emotions that humans have are all internal. It's how you see yourself. Frustration comes from the fact that people want something to be a certain way and it's not. That's not reality. So if if you're constantly not in reality, you're, you really, uh, you should be learning all the time. I mean, you know, adapt and survive is my motto. And that's, that's what everything, if you adapt, because every new every new stimulus, every new input, you walk out the door, it's not the same as the last time. And if you're if you're not sensitive enough to understand that you don't have not, not just all the answers, you don't have any answers until you encounter it, then 
Yeah, that's that's why every single dog, every moment is different. Every single human is different. So, and every environment is different that they're in. Yes. Yep. And so those are the three variables that are always changing as we as professionals are coming into that situation, trying to find the pattern to write this course. And, uh, you know, sometimes as quickly as possible. So Larry and JD, I'm going to let you guys go so I can sign off with Nelson here in a little bit. Oh, and man. He's going to start to, is there anything else that you wanted to say, Nelson, before these two go? Or is there anything, Larry or JD, you guys want to say? Just glad to see them both. Listen to your well, trainers I, the I, first I, time. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I, you know, I, I didn't catch I, I didn't catch the, the whole thing, you, you know, but I, I think I think in a nutshell, everything you guys were talking about, J, JD and, and Nelson also, all three of you, I think as trainers, where we're failing is not <laughs> connecting with these people, just what we're talking about here. We're not making that connection and giving them what they need. We're focused on stupid human training with these dogs and it's yes. not going to create the behavior we want it's never right. going to work and we have we have to get a little deeper and educate these people on the, on this side because when people understand when they start buying into it just like jd did it's life-changing for them it's life-changing for them you know yeah and so as, as trainers <laughs> more of us have to do better in that area all I got to say. Well, it's, the, the relationship of the dog is a microcosm of the relationship with us, with our clients. Just like the dogs need to trust yes. us, trust the situations we put them in and then trust themselves. That's the exact same situation with those clients, man. They need to learn to trust us, trust the situations we put them in and eventually <clears throat> trust themselves. And it's rapport. It's power. I mean, that's, that's what it. relationship is all about. Love you, Lair. Be careful going home, buddy. Hey, JD, thanks for uh, sharing that song. That was nice. It really was. Oh, thanks. That was cool. Oh, yeah. Like thanks. That. I appreciate it. They're all musicians. It. Yep. I've yeah. kind of, every once in a while, those pop up on my, my iPad, and I'm like, I can't. I forgot I even did that. That's a good, yeah. cool song. So, yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. I had a really good time. And yeah. thanks Bye, for all Larry. the mentoring Bye. that you guys Bye, JD. Thanks, Nelson. Hey, don't be a stranger. Thanks, guys. Peace out. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, wait, Larry. When's your you next guys. veterans? Right. When when's your next veterans? Well, I gotcha. I don't do you know. know. The last one okay. I was supposed to do was me and Nelson in New York, and it's when this stuff got bad, and oh, my yeah. family just really didn't want me to go. So, I'm I'm up I'm up for the veterans thing at any at any any time. I don't. I want you out here for one of them too. To have a place and. Yeah, I mean, people they, want they, to do they, it, then I'm I'm good that, with it, you know. Well, Valerie still wants us. There's a lot of veterans there in that New York area that want. So let's let's do it in New York as soon as we're available. I'm See you, Larry. With that. I'll announce it as soon as you it, got it. Yeah. Well, so it. Sounds good. All right. Bye, guys. Right, and, bye, JD. Oh, there's, wait, there goes those JD. Whoop. Okay, JD's gone too. I was saying bye to JD, but there we go, man. And that's it. It's like the proof is in the pudding. Let the let the people show you that, you know, this stuff is life changing and it doesn't just affect your relationship with your dog. It reflects your yeah. life as well. Um, well, it is you know, your life. Coming to Ontario. Sure. wants to know if you're coming to Ontario. Um, not I next year. <laughs> <laughs> that's what these guys are. That's a comment. Uh, no, Johnny these, Dion. these guys, uh, the only place I've got outside of the U S that I'm supposed to be at this coming year is Poland for the, um, EU IACP conference that's cool, man. Su supposed to be in April, but we'll that all depends on whether or not uh, we're allowed to travel or not. Yeah. So I'm one of, Jeremy's I think eight, that. eight speakers for that, uh, two days in Poland. You and, guys are in uh, Poland. Check out Nelson while he's there. You know. Well, yeah, any place in Europe, but come over to Poland, yes. But you know, we've got. I, I'm not sure. Day. I'm not sure who else. I think Roger Abrantes is going to speak. Be speaking, and there's there's a there's. It's an excellent, Sarah, excellent group. Yeah, says Sarah Blanchett. Go ahead and reach out to Nelson. I'm sure he he does some classes at the Canine uh, Human Institute. Um, let's see, yeah. Human Canine Institute, right? Canine-Human Relationship Institute. The canine comes first. Let's deliver it. There you go. Do you think it's more beneficial to stay with mom until 13 weeks if the breeder does no socialization, or you think it's better new home at eight weeks but have all other socialization? 
Well, if the breeder is not a good breeder and doesn't understand about uh, enriching environments and experiences with the mother around to help guide, then it would be better to get that dog away probably at nine to 10 weeks, frankly. Okay. Jeremy Majors, hunters and breeders that breed hunting dogs swear by 49 days. Wow. A theory to explore. I questioned my breeder yeah. about this and her explanation was their role of litter start to change. Yeah, 49 days is when we do temperament testing. You can drop and yes. freaking you seven weeks on the dot. And that's what's beautiful about these freaking um, you know, these dogs. And I was waiting for 49 days, man. And you better yeah. believe 49 days, those dogs are growling, biting, and doing a little bit more stuff than they were uh, yes. at 48 that's, days. You know, That was where that litter that I was working with, it was an experiment on my part too, because I worked with them for that five and a half to nine and a half week period. And um, right obviously, and, and rather than, I, I did some initial temperaments and and character testing but uh even that last week i saw some changes that uh were significant within that eight to nine week period so a lot of the times development um you know and each one of the dogs is going to develop at their own pace and rate uh, an example hmm. a dog that uh, actually the owner has kept in contact with me i think that was Oh gosh, I don't know, maybe five years ago, maybe more, uh, did a workshop up in Cleveland and, um, one of the dogs was a very high end, very severe, <laughs> um, we'll call it dominant, uh, aggressive dog uh, to other dogs and possibly people too. We tried to, uh, handle it there, uh, in three days, I kept telling everybody a couple of people wanted me to kick them out of class i said no wait just wait uh one person didn't want to wait and they left that was their choice they didn't see the magic happen on the third day and on the third day the dog showed who it really was and that it made appropriate decisions correctly on its own and uh ended up the uh that person um uh, worked with the dog i advised them for a while and then determined that um, there was a police department that that was small smaller town smaller city that uh, could use a dog that dog has ended up she sent me a a photo of it uh, as a police dog and it's doing great so each dog develops has to have the right situation uh, just like humans do so, you know, different, Just different like, rates of development. And I, you know, even if you do test temperament at seven weeks, I would go back at that nine to 10 week period too, because you're going to well, see there's a lot of changes. It, well, there's a lot of stuff communicated too, between those puppies during that yes. temperament test. And one, one guy might come out temperament like this. And then another dog might be just like this, you know, and, just, well, and let them well, know, you know. <laughs> so, so there's a, there's, there's basically a brain tree, a neural pathway forming of, of, um, I won't get into all the specifics, but basically myelination of the brain from the base brain to the upper regions that happen okay. months in. Okay. And until all that connection between the base brain and the upper brain, the, the, and the we call cortex. That cognition, cognition development. Yeah, that, and you can that, see that later on happening. Well, but that's just the beginning. The myelination between these two, these three halves, if you will, three parts of the brain only is only developed at a certain point, and that's months into its development. Then it you can really start seeing the cognition starting to happen the learning stages, etc. There's different periods that become fear stages and, you know, how you develop a dog through those fear stages to get, again, that sort of the relationship to get the dog to trust you to help develop them. Uh, that's critical. And that's, that's why I did the puppy class because I found very few people understand it. And Huge I was, I was kind of, I was kind of shocked, frankly. That's well, why it's I a went formative ahead and years, it. man. It's a formative years. And if we leave that out of the format of this dog during the rest of their life, it's going to be missing that it's in a cornerstone yes. of, of behavior too, you know, love the topic of communication, explaining yes. 
the importance of seeing that communication between dogs and human as being a conversation, an that, ongoing conversation. It is. It's 100 percent of the time. You know, if we if we look at the word converse, you know, con means together, verse verse sorry means to change. Yes. So we're coming yeah. together to change. And same thing when we look at the word respect, right? You have spec spectare, which is like our spectacles, like to see. You love those and base then, word forms, don't you? I do. I study Latin and Greek, man. It, 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 you need to go lot. back. Well, you need to go back to actually, if for, since English is our base language, you need to go back to Frisian language because that's where English came from. Frisian language? Free, the free, Frisia, like the Frisian Frisia. horses. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and the Latin and the well, and then the yeah. split between the Sanskrit and and uh, mm -hmm. but it's 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 interesting to look at our words and see what they mean. Uh, so our body language, cleaning hand signals are more important to be conscious of. Absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. Hey, Denise, the, welcome. The physical the physical attributes of what you do and how you do it are all caused by what's in your brain, your okay, intent. Right. In other words. So intent is everything because it causes you to be who you are, what you are, how you are in that moment. That's well, what it's about. And the thing is, is with intent, I think that that is the universal, what we call the epigenetic field of influence, right? The thing that, that, that it, even, even the dogs are connected to and they can see our intent much more than, than we can. In fact, we well, can more, more than we're more than we're conscious of it, and that's the problem. Is we are we are so conscious of everything else. Our brains are constantly frittered with too much information. There's one line I you know typically I hate uh, movies that uh, oh what's the cocky punk, uh, what's his name the movie cocky punk. Yeah, he always plays a cocky punk. You know, I think that's what you call me. Top Gun. Top, <laughs> oh, top Gun guy. What's his name? Tom Cruise. I, Tom I Cruise. Usually, I usually Maverick. Like movies because he's always a cocky punk. That's what he is. <laughs> but the one movie that I enjoyed where he got the crap beat out of him was that one with the uh, where he was supposed to be the uh, guy guy over in Japan. At the, samurai, the, the, last samurai, the last samurai, last samurai. Yeah, I where bet got, you enjoyed that one. Yeah, where he got the crap beat out of him, but actually he would have bo bones broken if the reality was, because <laughs> that was that was pretty good that part. Uh, but um, um, the one the kid said came up to him and said, "Too many mind." In other words, you're thinking too much. And you have to learn to, we call it being still. I call it being with. So being, being like the dog, you have to learn to calm your brain. You have to learn to stop being inside yourself because that's not reality. Mm. When, when you hesitate, when you get frustration, when you overthink it, you know, when you go into all the science and quadrants and all that stuff, that doesn't matter to a dog. Not one of it. All of those things are human constructs to try to understand something, to try to um, to comprehend on an easy level. And nothing is easy. It is all a hundred calculus problems at the same time, trying to come up with the same answer from different formulas at the same moment. That's yeah. what it's about. And, and, you know, all we can do is solve one issue and see how, how it, how it affects the other issues. And that's, that's the problem solving that we do. We are problem solvers. If we're not, you're, pattern, you're, you're, we're you're not going to, you're not, you're not going to become good at anything, frankly. So. Right. Well, I think that patterns, pattern recognition is the base of our problem solving because we're like, why do things go awry here, right? And, and, yes. And then as in, being a musician too. So being a musician as well, yeah. I fully understand how you feel so emotional about things. It does take a ton of control to mentally control that. Absolutely. Um, less mind, too much mind. Yeah, um, there's, there's control is control of self and it's not a battle it should be it should become relaxed you know people ask me you know with with 50 something years of of hand-to-hand -hand combat i'll call it that that's what it is um you know do i meditate and the answer is yes but not like you do 
I meditate while I'm in action. It's a moving meditation. So that that is how you calm the mind. You don't I calm it. it by sitting still. You calm it while you're doing things. Otherwise, you've practiced by having a calm mind while you're sitting still, and then it's totally fruited again once you're in motion. Well, and what are you going to accomplish sitting still, too? Where in motion, you can create something. Like, that's what I do. With exactly. The craft, that's know, the that's... difference. Yeah, that's the difference between creating something as a as a as an art form as a skill um and simply calming yourself there's there's very little there's very little little um how can i put this there's very little use in self-calming unless it's calming to do something while you're in action to make you a better performer yes. or make you a better uh, you know, to achieve that which you are creating, yeah. you know, and as within, so without, right. you know, and not only that, so, but so sometime we need to we need to have a conversation about just stick on dog stuff. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. That's not my style. You go to another no, podcast for that yeah. crap. <laughs> Gee, me Christmas. But it's a whole, I mean, like I was saying, well, the dog the is a microcosm, yeah. right? The microcosm, it's a, it's a relationship it and then it's behavior, it's all that stuff. But behavior issues involve the person to do the introspection. I think there's so much resistance, absolutely, because you got to look at your own shadow self. You don't have that with obedience. Um, I love that. I don't know it all, but I'm on the right path. I really Good. like that. Good. Good. Thank you, JD. JD is so interesting love that jd ask holes <laughs> and then um nature therapy i think the food he eats is is is, is art that's right and then yep. thank you brilliant interview i'm back george is back sorry i missed <laughs> whatever dude you'll eat it later but the other thing that i wanted to touch before we go nelson is that nelson also is a musician and nelson has an up-and-coming album drop when is that happening? Well, it was supposed to be November 23rd was supposed to be the release date, but we've had so much uh, engineering, uh, okay. last minute stuff, uh, distribution stuff. I mean, they need it formatted specific ways. And, you know, that's what that's, uh, you know, that's what's happening all behind the scenes. So that's taking a couple of months more than, than we thought. Uh, we're very, very close. We just, uh, literally today just finally established the final timing even between the songs you have to have the specific amount of time between the songs that's the pause between so it's it's uh, it's down to every infinite level so yeah I'm I'm <laughs> I'm looking forward to um, getting this first one out I've already been working on the second one as far as the music itself about half of the music I have done on this first one is literally uh, created for just this album. The other half uh, was created years ago, and that's kind of the formula that I'm taking forward with the rest of the albums is I have, you know, probably four to five hours of my own material that I've developed, and I will create probably that much as I go through it and create more albums. Um, it's been an interesting process. It was, uh, I think 1973 or four was the last time I recorded anything. In a way, year I was born. Uh, <laughs> you're a punk. I know. <laughs> <laughs> After that, yeah. I, where was I when you were recording those albums? Beats me. <laughs> you were a twinkle in your father's eye, right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so you don't have a date, but, um, no, but it's, it should be very soon. Um, okay. you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, around the first of the year is what it is. Um, I'm going to be uh, one of your groupies when you go on tour, I'm going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a different, it's a different universe these days, not just with COVID, but actually in the music industry, it used to be, you know, we used to tour and that was our thing. And then you get radio time and, right. uh, uh, and you know, live performance was where everything was at. Now it's all electronic. Um, 
frankly, and very little is the performance aspect of things. So I I'm not come back to that. I hope I, I, I like live I, performances. I, I do too. Um, I'm frankly not interested in doing touring and, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm certainly not interested in, uh, <clears throat> doing coffee shops and smoke filled places. Um, you know, the, the type of music that I, that I do, uh, that I create is more in a genre that would be, you know, it's not loud, uh, rock stuff. I used to do that. You played a little bit earlier while JD was chatting a little bit. Oh, sorry, I was trying to tune up that guitar. I hadn't touched it in a couple of days. Um, <laughs> and you just had to do it. <laughs> yeah, didn't mean to make noise behind. Sorry. Um, no, you're, whatever. Yeah, it's. Um, well, Nelson but, is a, an amazing anyway. guitar player. I remember when we were in uh, where were we, California, or where were we when we went to that uh, guitar mm -hmm. store? And oh, that's right. There and, yeah, and Ontario. That was Ontario, California. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, now we, yeah, I've been playing. Josie mm. says, "Grateful to get to know you more and better. All I want is to be." There that's you it. go. To be training dogs is my therapy. Well, to be is also a goal. Just to be or to not be. to be, right? <laughs> right. To be, or, to be or not to be. Which is my hotel room? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, South Shore, so, yeah. Quebec, Canada. We got some a lot uh, of Canadians joining us today. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, A. Eh? Sorry, A. Eh? Let's go to Tim Horton, say. Eh? <laughs> Do you know that they, uh, somebody was telling me that they put maple syrup on the snow and wait for it to get nice and gooey and then they'll roll it up on a stick and eat it like a sucker. That sounds Canadian. That sounds like <laughs> ultra Canadian. But. I love Canada. I've been there so many times. Uh, I probably, you know, probably 30%, maybe 20 to 30% of the students that I've had at the Institute have been from Canada. So a lot of the people, you know, Good. done a lot of workshops over the years in, you know, Ontario and BC areas, both. And, uh, really enjoy it it's great love it. it sounds like you're popular and you're enjoyed as well man and and thank you um for coming on today and hey, you guys enjoyed it thank yeah, you very human, much man we... human relationship center um in the dfw area absolutely only good thing about snow see they're doing it they're, they're they don't <laughs> they don't <laughs> deny it oh yeah. Canada. yeah i i yeah i moved south to get away from cold because cold hurts i don't it like does cold. Hurt. It does hurt. <laughs> well thank you nelson and stay uh, on man you. i'm going to enjoy um, it i'm honored uh, sir and this is our very first twitch broadcast so Hope all you Twitch yeah, Twitches. Don't, don't get too much of a Twitch. <laughs> don't get too much of a Twitch. <laughs> bye, everybody. And hold on, Nelson. I'll say goodbye to you in just a second. All right. All right. Bye-bye. And share this. If you guys don't mind, share this right now if you haven't already.